Welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now, whether you like it or not. And you're going to like it. This is lesson 5.7, graphing a system of linear inequalities. Well, this is going to be a pretty easy lesson, I hope, because it's a lot like yesterday's, except we're just going to be graphing two inequalities on the same coordinate plane. So a lot of what you learned yesterday, or in the last lesson, we're going to be applying here. But first, we have to do this thing, where we substitute a given ordered pair into a system and see, is it the solu a solution, or is it a solution, I should say. Here's my system of uh, inequalities. y is less than 2x, and y is greater than or equal to x plus 1. And I've given, been given two ordered pairs here. Is one of these, or both of these, or neither of these a solution to the system? Let's find out. We're going to substitute uh, the first ordered pair, 3, 5. So 5 is less than 2 times 3. Right. 5 is y. 3 is x. So 5 is less than 6. So far, so good. We like that. That's true. What about... The second one, well, y is 5, so 5 is greater than or equal to 3, which is x, plus 1. 5 is greater than or equal to 4. Hey, also a true statement. Right? True, true. So this is a solution. That's how I show work here. Boy, so important. Uh, the second one, negative 2, 0. Let's go ahead and try that in the same set of uh, linear inequalities. So 0 is less than 2 times negative 2. So 0 is less than negative 4. That's a true statement. That's a false statement, I'm sorry. That's false. Zero is not less than negative four. So I could actually stop here since it's not a solution for the first one. It doesn't matter whether it's a solution for the second one. So uh, this is not a solution. Remember, to be a solution to the system, it has to be a solution to both parts, to both inequalities in that system. So it's, since it's not, an in, it's not a solution for the first one, it doesn't matter whether the second one uh, works or not. OK, let's get to the fun stuff. The graphing. Uh, here we go. Like I said, we're going to do the same thing we did in the previous lesson, but we're going to do them in the same coordinate plane. And what we're looking for here is the overlapped area. The overlapped area is the solution area. You notice when we solve a system of inequalities, we don't have. It's not like a number. It's a graph because there's an infinitely, uh, there's infinitely many solutions to these things. So we have to express it on a graph. And here we go. Let's take a look at the first one here. Uh, graph the system of linear inequalities. Y is less than or equal to 3. Well, that should be pretty easy to do because um, it's just going to be a plain old, good old horizontal line for our boundary with a solid horizontal line. And since Y is less than this, I'm going to be shading below that. And that looks like that. And then the second one, y is greater than x plus 2. So greater than, uh, not equal to, so it's going to be a, uh, a dashed line, x plus 2. So my y-intercept's at 2, right here. And the slope is 1, so it's going to be going up by 1 this way. OK, so that boundary is going to look like this. Okay, but now we have to do the shading part of it. Where is y greater than x plus 2? Well, it's going to be above it. And now what's that going to look like? It'll look like this. Boom, like that. 
have to kind of excuse kind of the sloppiness in, in this area here and, and down in here. Uh, I have to draw this by hand when I want to draw these weird shapes. But what can we see here? I shade above the line, but this area here, so the, this kind of pinkish area is the above the line. This bluish area is below the line. But the overlapping areas, this kind of purplish area, that's our solution area. This is what your graph should look like. This is, this is the solution. This is how we solve these. We have to graph them. Okay, so there's one easy example. Let's take a look at another one here. We want to graph uh, this one, 2x plus y is uh, less than negative 1. So I'm going to do here, I'm going to rewrite the first one as y is less than, I'm, sub I'm subtracting 2x from both sides, x minus 1. And then the second one will be y is greater than negative 2x plus 3. Okay, so I just rewrote those so we can look at them in slope-intercept form. So let's do the first one here. Y is uh, less than 2x minus 1. So my y-intercept is here at negative 1. My slope is negative 2. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, etc. And that boundary is going to be a dashed line. So something like, um, that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's uh, that's the first one. And then Y is less than that. So I'm going to shade below this line here, and it's going to look like this. It looks like that. And uh, let's graph the other one. Y is greater than negative 2x plus 3. So we can only see these are, what? These are going to be parallel lines, right? Because they have the same slope with different y-intercepts. So negative 2x plus 3. My y-intercept's up here at 3. But I have the same, that, that same negative 2 slope. Let's go ahead and put, plot that line in here. Um, again, a dashed line for this one. In this case, where am I going to shade? Am I shading above or below? And I'm shading above, right? So that's going to look like this. Like that. So there's uh, no overlap area. So if there's no overlap area, this is no solution. Okay, it's kind of our special case for linear in graphing linear inequalities. Okay, so those are two uh, basic examples we have there. And, oh, we still have to write some systems of represented by the graph. So you kind of have to put your mind, you kind of have to put your mind in how do we read these graphs and um, what is shaded. So the dash line, let's talk a, look at the take a look at the dash line first. Well, that's just y and x, right? It's like the boundary is y equals x because... 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. That's the boundary. But I'm shaded below that. Right? I'm kind of, I'm really, this whole area down here is shaded. Right? But Because we're only looking at the overlap area here. So this is going to be y is less than x dashed line. This one is going to be y is greater than negative 2 or equal to negative 2. Y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Because again, we're shaded above, the shading is above this line and below, above this line and below this line. Okay. Uh, another example, right uh, system re represented by this graph. Well, let's do the, uh, the vertical line first. This is x equals 3. But since this is an inequality, I'm shaded to the left of it. So for my x values, this would be y is x is less than or equal to 3. For the dashed line, that's going to be y is equal to, I'm not going to write the equal, because um, that's just going to be a boundary. 
I uh, have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of up 2 over 3. Up 2 over 3, so 2 thirds. 2 thirds x minus 1. And that would be, since we're shaded above that line, here's the line, we're shaded above it. Uh, y will be greater than but not equal to 2x, 2 thirds x minus 1. Okay. Just reading the graph. All right. That concludes the chapter. That's uh, lesson 5.7. Uh, don't be a zombie, or in this case, a walker from The Walking Dead. It's pretty scary, huh? Um, tests coming up soon. Uh, all kinds of fun to be had in this chapter, right? Thanks a lot for being such awesome students, and I will see you in class. Have a great, great rest of your day. Bye-bye.